Well, good morning, benvenuto, buongiorno. Welcome to the uh, beautiful city of Bari in the south of Italy in the region of Apulia. The topic of today's video, which is money, <laughs> or actually uh, how to deal with money here in Italy. It's that stuff that's so hard to uh, to get, so difficult to earn, and, and so easy to spend. It just evaporates from my pocket. Uh, how about yours? Um, so, um, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, you know how to deal with money when traveling into Italy. It's a very common question, especially amongst uh, first-time travelers to to, uh, to Italy. Uh, you know, how do you pay for things? Uh, do you use a credit card or cash? How do you get cash here in Italy? And uh, will your credit card work in Italy? All good questions. So stand by, uh, you know, get a cup of coffee, and we'll uh, we'll tell you everything you need to know about uh, about money in Italy. Well, as you can tell, we've changed venues. It got a little noisy in the park where I was before. Uh, there was a loud card game going on. There were ambulances flying back and forth down the street. Uh, there were some kids that were making a lot of noise and uh, I was having trouble concentrating. <laughs> so so I moved uh, into my apartment here in Bari in uh, Puglia. It's a beautiful apartment. It has this gorgeous vaulted ceiling that uh, just uh, makes you feel like you're in a cave or something. It's really nice. And I'm not in the basement. I'm actually on the uh, on the first floor so uh, it's a beautiful place though um, small efficient and uh, not too expensive well um, if you're spending money in Italy whether you're spending cash or you're spending uh, using your credit card just to go to buy things uh, you are using euros and I think it's important that um, that when you uh, are spending time here or getting ready to spend time here you start thinking in euros now um, there is a part of Europe uh, called the Eurozone and the Eurozone are those countries in which uh, the currency is the Euro. Now prior to 2002 when the uh, Euro came along this was the currency in Italy. This is the Lira and the Lira was super inflated. Italy was having a bad time with the Lira and uh, you know you would have 10,000 Lira notes and uh, 20,000 Lira notes and so on. Um, got kind of crazy. So when the Euro came along, it was a very good thing for Italy, and I hope Italy remains on the uh, on the Euro standard. Who knows? Uh, just had an election here. <laughs> there's, there's a new party in charge, so we'll see what they, uh, what they end up doing. Um, not every country uh, in Europe is in the Eurozone. There are some countries that, uh, that maintain their own currency, specifically the Scandinavian countries, uh, Romania, Iceland, uh, there's a few others, but in general, the euro is the standard currency in, in most of Europe. Now, um, the value of the euro uh, varies, it changes uh, from day to day uh, against other currencies, and of course, most of us are interested in the relationship between the euro and the dollar. And right now, the dollar is strong against the euro. It's a good time to, <laughs> to be converting dollars into euros, you get more. Uh, there have been times when I've been here where it's been the other way around. <laughs> it's not been quite so good. So, uh, you know, one way you can keep track of, um, of what the current status is uh, regarding the value of the euro is to uh, use a website that I use uh, frequently. Uh, it's called xe.com, and uh, xe.com is a um, kind of a currency tracking website. You don't have to register for it. It doesn't cost you any... Uh, anything to use it uh, and they do a really good job of tracking the current value of all the major currencies in the world so uh, I keep it set to uh, to euros and dollars and that way I can kind of see you know what's the euro worth right now and is it better or worse than it was yesterday it's a you know doesn't make a lot of difference but I guess it's kind of good um, the uh, you can kind of think as a euro of a euro as being sort of like a dollar, but again, they're not exactly the same value. Um, this is what euro bills look like. Euro bills, uh, folding money, if you will, uh, come in uh, several denominations. The smallest denomination of a euro bill is five euros. Uh, there's a ten euro, 
a 20 euro, a 50 euro, and uh, there are also 100 and 200 euro bills. Uh, not in my wallet though, because because it's a you know it's a hassle to have a big bill. Even a 50 is a big deal if you're uh, trying to uh, you know buy four euros worth of cheese at a market, and uh, you know you hand the poor market guy a 50 euro note, and he's digging through his bag of money trying to find enough uh, to make the change. So I try to uh, I try to, to uh, keep smaller uh, smaller notes, and I also keep a lot of euro coins. Now euro coins, these are some of them right here. Um, they are uh, also uh, in multiple denominations. The uh, the largest denomination of euro coins is a two euro coin. That's the big one over there in that picture. Uh, next is the euro, and uh, then there's a fifty euro cent. Uh, 20 euro cent, a 10 euro cent, a 5 euro cent, a 2 euro cent, which are, you don't see very often, and a 1 euro cent. So, uh, you know, those small coins um, are not very useful. And uh, I generally, when I have a handful of them, I give them to a beggar on the street uh, who needs it more than I do. So uh, that's what I do with the small coins. Now, one of the cool things about the um, about the uh, the euro coins, the euro bills are all the same. Doesn't matter where you are, the euro the euro bills are all the same. But the euro coins, the European uh, Union mints uh, a version of each of the euro coins specific to the different member states of the European Union. Uh, now, uh, so the coin on one side is the same, no matter you know what uh, country is represented on the other side. But the reverse side uh, is have does have a specific design unique to one of the countries in the European Union. It doesn't matter, um, you know, you can be in, uh, in, uh, in Italy and spend a, uh, you know, spend a Dutch uh, Euro, and you can be in uh, France and spend a Spanish Euro. It doesn't matter, they all spend the same, but it's kind of cool, and some people like to collect uh, the Euro coins to have one from each of the different, uh, different member companies. Um, now, uh, credit cards um, are certainly accepted in Italy. Uh, they're, they're well accepted. Uh, and uh, I recommend uh, using cash for small purchases, but saving your credit card for the big purchases and for cash advances that we'll get into in just a second. Um, you know, when you're buying your coffee in Brioche in the morning, uh, you know, use euros. You don't use your credit card. Um, you know, these small merchants, they have to pay a fee to use credit cards and their, you know, their prices are so low, uh, it's almost like you're insulting them by, by, uh, by giving them a credit card. Now, where I do use my credit card, uh, when the, uh, the rare occasions when I stay in hotels, I use a credit card. Um, when I'm uh, renting a car, which doesn't happen very often, but it does every now and then, I use a credit card. Um, when I buy a train ticket. Now, train tickets are a little bit different for me because I use the Trenitalia app. Trenitalia is the big train company in Italy, the national train company. And um, by the way, I have a video all about that, which is, um, there's a link up there somewhere somewhere in this uh, video that you'll see. Uh, if you're interested in how to use Italian trains, it's a pretty good video. Um, but I use the Trenitalia app. I've got my credit card link to the Trend Italia app. So I can go to the Trend Italia app. I'm going to go take a trip uh, the day after tomorrow on a train to a city about an hour away from here to shoot a video, of course. And uh, I will buy the ticket on the Trend Italia app and it will automatically connect to my credit card and, you know, take the money out and so on. Um, I uh, use it for phone SIM when I buy the SIM card for my phone. By the way, another video <laughs> about using U.S. cell phones in, uh, in Italy. I use the credit card and when I recharge my, uh, my Italian phone service, I use my credit card. Um, I guess the other place I use it frequently is in supermarkets. Supermarkets uh, are a good place to use a credit card. Um, they're well set up for it and uh, they're big businesses. And In fact, the other night I was at a grocery store, Supermercado, and uh, they, uh, I wanted to, uh, to break a 50 <laughs> you know, that I'd gotten out of the out of the cash machine and uh, uh, the uh, clerk said that they didn't have the money could I use my credit card for this little five-year-old purchase of some uh, 
of some uh, food for the following day. So I did, you know, but uh, but uh, that's about it, you know. Uh, and the other thing I use it for is cash advances, and more about that in a minute. Now, uh, when you're thinking about what cards to bring, um, you know, I bring a few with me. I carry one in my wallet, um, actually sometimes two, and I keep the other credit cards kind of put away. So in case the one gets lost or stolen, I have uh, I have a backup. Um, always ask your bank or your credit union or your financial institution, whoever they might be, um, about foreign transfer fees, foreign exchange fees. Some uh, banks and some credit card issuers charge really high foreign exchange fees, uh, and. Uh, you know that's not the credit card you should be using over here because you're going to be buying in euros and you don't want the bank to charge you you know five or six dollars per transaction uh, just to uh, just to convert the money over you want to find a credit card that has no foreign transaction fees uh, the same thing goes for um, the uh, exchange rate because some uh, banks will inflate the exchange rate a little bit and it's, it's, you know if the exchange rate is um, is a uh, a, a euro and five euro cents for every dollar. They may only give you uh, 99 euro cents for every dollar and keep the, keep the difference, you know, because they're in the business of making money for their shareholders. So, you know, it's good to uh, pay attention to the banks, ask the bank what their exchange policies are, what their foreign exchange fees are, foreign transfer fees, and also cash advance fees. Now, uh, it's also a good idea, and not every bank requires this, but it's a good idea to let your, your bank know their credit card issuer know that you're going to be traveling in Italy or wherever you're going to be traveling uh, and the dates because uh, some credit card companies uh, will flag overseas transactions if you uh, haven't you know told me you were doing that and they'll say ah no 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 somebody's got that guy's credit card they've gone to Italy with it and uh, we're gonna block those transactions so it's good to let them know that too now um, one other thing about credit cards it's good to know is that um, the security standard for credit cards in Europe is different than the security standard for credit cards in the, uh, in the U.S. In the U.S. we use a system called a chip and signature. Now your credit card has a little electronic chip on it that's a little kind of gold square with the little squiggles in it. And, uh, it has a PIN number probably assigned to it. You use that at the ATM machines for getting cash advances or whatever. But um, the priority for credit cards in the United States is chip and signature. And the idea is that the clerk is supposed to check your signature against the signature on the back of your credit card. Do they match, you know? And I've never had that happen to me, I don't think, ever. Uh, in Europe, the standard is, is chip and PIN. And so there is no chip and signature system here in general. Uh, so uh, you have to have a PIN number normally to, uh, to use a credit card over here. Uh, now a lot of uh, credit card readers, uh, ATM machines, the readers that are in the grocery stores and, and restaurants and places like that, a lot of them have been adapted. Uh, a lot of them now um, you know, allow American credit cards to be used, but in some cases, uh, it, it is not possible um, and because the technology is old. This especially happens in, uh, in rural areas. Um, you know, a rural train station, uh, there was a rural train station uh, in Calabria that I was at a few years ago. I needed to buy a ticket and I put my, you know, my regular U.S. credit card in the machine and it went me, 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 me. Nope, we don't like that credit card. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I was I was at a loss, but luckily I had another credit card that did work. And uh, what I had was a card that was a European standard card. Now there are a growing number of American credit card providers that uh, will uh, issue you an, what's called an EMV card. EMV. Uh, you can uh, look at this list. There's a link to uh, a lot of links somewhere in the notes here today, and also on screen for some of the different uh, credit card companies that uh, do provide EMV cards. But you need to, uh, when you um, get the credit card issued, you need to talk to the company and make sure that the card they're issuing is an EMV card. You want to use um, 
Visa and MasterCards here. Uh, American Express cards are not very well known, and um, except at fancy hotels and expensive restaurants, you'll have a hard time using an American Express card. So a, a Visa or a MasterCard, uh, and get an EMV card if you can. I carry one from uh, the Andrews Air Force Base Federal Credit Union that uh, that I got a few years ago. That's called a Global Global Trek card, I think. Uh, and it is an EMV card, but and for a while there were just a couple of credit unions that offered these cards. Now there's you know eight or ten different issuers in the country that do that. So, uh, so like I say, talk to your credit card companies, see if they have an EMV card, uh, if they can issue you an EMV card uh, instead of the um, instead of the chip and signature card you probably have. Now um, I have one other place that I had problems with uh, with the standard U.S. credit card. Surprisingly was the uh, the airport in Milan last year. I was uh, I flew into Milan last year and uh, I uh, on a trip and I went to the uh, ticket machine for the Malpensa Express. It's a train that goes from the airport which is outside of town into the city to a couple of a uh, couple of stations inside uh, Milan. I was actually uh, that time I was staying at a uh, at a hotel that was close to Centrale when I came, so I was trying to get to the central station, central train station in Milan from the airport, and I went to the ticket machine, I put my U.S. credit card in, and it, nope, nope, we're not going to let you use that credit card. So I was able to use my EMV card, everything worked, and if I hadn't been, uh, luckily, at the airport, there's also a ticket office for the, the uh, train, and so uh, I could have gone in there and paid cash for a uh, for a ticket, or maybe they would have taken my uh, my uh, my credit card. Now, something else that's changed in the last few years is uh, the um, digital wallet systems. Uh, I am uh, been using Apple Pay quite a bit, you know, uh, to uh, and I suspect Google Pay works the same. But Apple Pay has been working for me in lots of different places, and including train stations, including uh, including bus tickets, including. Uh, getting my telephone card recharged at tobacco machines. That's one of the way things you do here to, to get your telephone service topped up. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's good to have a, uh, a lot of alternatives so that you can, that you, can uh, you know, spend money when you need to. You can get money when you need to, why not? Well, let's talk about how you get cash from an ATM machine in, in Europe. Now, um, the Bancomat network, uh, Bancomat, is used by uh, most of the banks, and uh, and I like to go to a bank to get my uh, to get my my cash withdrawals, my cash advances. I do that for a couple reasons. Uh, one is that usually the banks have a lower fee and a better exchange rate and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the second is it's a little more secure. Now uh, there are these machines that you'll see on the street. They're all over the place, so you know in tourist areas especially and airports and sometimes in train stations. Uh, these machines uh, are ones that I would personally avoid because they, uh, unless you absolutely have to use them because they charge high fees and they, uh, they have a poor exchange rate. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I would not use these. I use the ones in banks. Uh, now, I'm right across the street uh, from the Banco de Napoli, uh, the big, uh, well, actually it's, it's that's what's written on the side of the bank. It's actually owned by somebody else right now. It's really common in Italy for banks to change ownership and change names, but the name on the side of the bank remains the same to confuse everybody. <laughs> Even the people that have accounts there are confused sometimes. Um, the banks are kind of cool. The bank across the street has a, um, they have a, um, a, a closed door. The, the, uh, I think they have six or seven uh, ATM machines, uh, bancomats, that are in a vestibule, kind of a lobby. They're open 24 hours a day, but to get in, you have to go up to this door, and uh, you stand in front of the door for a second or two, and then the door, a green light comes on, and the door opens up, it slides open, you go inside, you get your cash, and when you walk out, the door opens up again and lets you out. Um, I think that there's probably somebody monitoring that at least some of the time. Uh, probably a security guard in an office somewhere who's paying attention to see who's coming and going to make sure you don't have a, a big, uh, a big uh, hatchet or something like that that you're uh, that you're carrying to, to open the machine up. Now, sometimes uh, bank machines, um, bank 
vestibules in order to get in. You don't just walk up to them. You have to go up to the door and there will be a little panel on the side like the one I'm showing here. Uh, you actually stick your credit card into the slot in that panel. Uh, it's not all it does is identify you to make sure that you're okay to come in and then it opens the door for you and you're able to come in and I like going to banks uh, because you know you're you're inside a, a room when you're getting the cash you can put the cash away wherever you're putting it away and and uh, it's uh, less likely that um, somebody's gonna grab your wallet and run away uh, I'm not not too worried about that here but uh, but you know it's a good thing to uh, do it in banks well um, that's it. That's how you spend money in Italy. And, uh, you know, I want to say that, uh, that I had a nice conversation with, a, uh, with the uh, proprietor of the bar I had breakfast in earlier today. And um, she was surprised that I was from the United States because he said, you don't act like someone from the United States. And I said, well, how do people from the United States usually act? And they said, well, they, they come into the bar. They don't say anything to anybody. They don't say hello or how are you doing or good morning or good evening or whatever. They just walk in and they sit there and they just kind of stand there and wait <laughs> because they they want somebody to come and acknowledge them and talk to them and and you know it's it just you can always tell <laughs> you know so I do want to say that it's important to be kind to people when you're traveling to to be culturally aware to uh, to try to. Um, be friendly and try to uh, to have a good conversation when you go into a uh, into an establishment. Well, that's it for uh, this little short video about money. Uh, it's hard to get. It's easy to spend, and uh, it's a fun place to spend it here in Italy. It's not a very expensive place to be. I had a great lunch today. I had a, a stuffed baked eggplant and a man for uh, five euros. It was delicious. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty inexpensive to be here in Italy. Um, I hope wherever you are that life is good. All right. Well, arrivederci. Uh, we'll see you later. Ciao. A hey, uh, buona giornata all those wonderful things and uh, remember to be kind to each other and be kind to people that you encounter in the world because some people are not having a good day and kindness really helps. Ciao!